So the first question is a question from Elliot Rylands. Sorry for my accent. So Elliot is saying, hey Patrick, should my double-handed backhand feel like a left-handed forehand guided by my right arm? And is there a player currently on tour you think we could all learn from with a perfect double-handed backhand form? Cheers. So Elliot, it's a very good question, first of all. It shows that you know tennis well. To answer that question, of course, on a two-handed backhand, the, the left hand or right hand if you're lefty, but let's say you're righty, the left hand plays a major role. But the role is more or less important depending on your grip. If you have kind of a forehand grip with your right hand and then a forehand grip also with your left hand, then the left hand is extremely important, plays an incredible important role. It's guiding the ball and it's more than that, it's almost a lefty forehand. And actually, the players who have that kind of grip, we always love to do exercises in the box using their only their left hand and playing some forehands here because this is exactly the role of the left hand with, with this grip on a 200 backhand. So, they learn to go under the ball, spin the ball, give directions, and it's also a way to, to reinforce the power of this left hand. Now, if you have a grip a little bit like Jim Cooper at that time, which is completely different, he had almost a one hand backhand grip with the right hand, and then the second hand was coming here. Then, as you can see, the role of the right arm is much more important, and the role of the second hand is just to give the direction. So it really depends on your grip. Now to answer your question about who can we take example, I mean there are a lot of uh, great 200 backhand on the men's side. Uh, the first one that comes to my mind is uh, Sasha Zverev. I think he has a great 200 backhand with the grip, the first grip that I talked about, uh, in which the the role of the left arm is very important. So you can completely take example on his backhand. Question from Eric Kamara. So Eric is asking me a question about online coaching uh, and he's saying and he's right that now there is a lot of online coaching tennis which is available on the net and he doesn't know where to start um, uh, and how, how should he choose the right uh, online uh, coaching uh, and the last question is how would you get a player who can't be with you personally to find their best path through online instruction. So it's also a very good question and Eric, you're totally right. Uh, there is more and more and more online coaching nowadays. So this is the thing I would, I would advise you. So first of all, pick someone you like and pick someone you trust and pick someone that you want to hear from. It's the same in real life if you want to have a real coach. Uh, you will go to someone that you connect with and someone that, you, that inspires you, that you want to listen to. That's a key for good coaching. Uh, to believe in the person that is teaching you. The second advice I would give to you, I would rather go with a coach than with a player. Nothing against players, they're great and they're especially great at what they're doing, but they will teach you their technique, what they like to do, and uh, it might be great, but it might be also not your technique and wouldn't fit what you're doing. What is great if you follow online coaching with players is that you get into their online routine and you learn a lot about their discipline and how they get to the top. But if you want to find something that is more adapted to you, I think a coach would give you more options, different options, and then you can navigate and find the one that fits your game the best. Question from Heath Pierce. If you're just beginning playing the sport, what are the few things to focus on to build strong fundamentals. So we have these things in tennis that we call fundamentals. I'm not going to go through all of them because there are quite a few. Uh, the first one I would like to focus on is stability, so balance. When you hit the ball, be balanced because, you know, especially when you start, you need to have things that are really set. You will want to be accurate and if the whole building is moving, and you are the building, it's going to be very difficult for you to be accurate and even more at the start where you are learning and you know the less things are moving 
the better is the easier it's going to be for you to be accurate so start with stabilizing the legs so big distance between your foot low on your legs very stable before hitting the ball that's the first advice so the the whole building which is you is not moving the second thing that you're going to block is your wrist which is not an advice in general but to start i would block the wrist because imagine that the legs are moving the arm is moving and the, and the wrist is moving, the balls are going to go everywhere. So you block the wrist, you hold the racket tight and you just play with your arm with the legs stable. And then you find slowly, you can start from the box and you find a way to get accurate and, and get the ball on the other side of the court. Then what I would advise you to do is to work always still with the legs very stabilized. I would rather not hit, use the arm at all, but use only the wrist. And you can block your arm by, by having your elbow very close to your body, stay in the box again, and play only with your hand like that. Only with your wrist. And then you get used to be accurate with your wrist. Once you're very accurate just with your wrist, when you're very accurate just with your arm blocking the wrist, then you can start to, to put both at the same time. And I think it's a great way to start playing, having a few fundamentals. A question from Gillian van Tebben, who explains that she went through a chemotherapy and she, she's finished it. So congratulations. Uh, I know it's, uh, it's something really tough and you went through, fantastic. Uh, and she's explaining to us that uh, she wants to go back to the court and play some tennis and asking advice about uh, what would be uh, of most benefit flexibility strength to go back to the court being in shape again and uh, she's saying she's having some issues uh, putting a program together so Gillian first of all uh, I think tennis is a great workout it makes you work on almost everything like the upper body the lower body the cardio the strength the speed so in itself playing tennis and you can start slowly in the box then you can move to the back but not move and suddenly start to implement some movement day after day uh, I think it's the best way to come back to being in shape now there are some stuff that you can add out of the court to uh, strengthen your body I would do some exercise with the band for your shoulder but it's more protection for your shoulder for your back I think that can be very useful in order to avoid getting injured and uh, and you mentioned it flexibility also uh, for recovery but also to get back to flexibility because tennis will develop your strength more than your flexibility so you have to compensate that a little bit so I would do also quite a lot of stretching and I think the whole package with playing tennis and all its movement and the strength that comes with it and you add flexibility and a little bit of strength with the band where you protect your shoulder and your back this complete package will put you back in a great shape and I'm happy to see you getting back to the court again. Adnan, you ask the question that you know, makes a lot of debate. Who is the GOAT of tennis from the big three? So, I'm not going to give you a name, sorry for that, because I'm nobody to give you a name and I think nobody should give a name unless you're a big fan and this is fine. Um, I think the history will talk and history is about winning Grand Slams and we all know that, that the guy who's going to be able to score the most number of Grand Slams will definitely be the GOAT um, who will it be? we don't know yet I think that Novak is in the best position because he's the younger of the three he's the healthier of the three he's on an incredible winning streak because he, he's won three out of four Grand Slams and three and one final this year so he's in the best position, but you know tennis, anything can happen. What works today cannot work tomorrow. We can suddenly have a young guy come up and win everything and not let any of the top three win one again. Anything can happen and that's what makes this quest so exciting. Uh, and the uh, history will tell once again. Now uh, there is a subjective way to see it. Who's the GOAT? The one, the one who plays the most extraordinary tennis, the guy who, is, who has the best fighting spirit or your favorite player. Everyone is entitled to say who's the GOAT, but to me, the number of titles of Grand Slams will tell.